I wrote the book because uh, back in 1978, uh, October 78, I was uh, an intelligence detective, uh, the first black detective in the history of the Colorado Springs Police Department. And uh, I was also the youngest detective in the history of the department, by the way. And I was sitting in my office in the intelligence division and uh, one of the things we did was monitor newspaper activity every day to see what was going on that might have an impact on our city. And on this particular day, I saw this ad. It said Ku Klux Klan for information, contact, and then there was a phone number. I'm sorry, there was a P.O. box. So I basically sat down, wrote a note to this P.O. box, and I said, uh, I'm a white pure white American uh, man with Aryan blood. I talked on the phone exactly like I'm talking to you. There was no attempt to disguise my voice. You have to understand, one of the uh, dynamics of undercover work is you keep as true to your true self, your personality as possible. The reason being, when you're dealing with somebody in an undercover capacity, they could trip you up if you're assuming an identity that's too far removed from who you actually are. So when you're undercover, you go about doing what you do in the normal way. And uh, when I picked up the phone to start talking to these guys, I talked to them just as I'm talking to you right now. Uh, people who say, uh, as I was told in the beginning, you can't pull this investigation off because they'll immediately recognize the difference in a black man's voice versus a white man, my response to them was, what does a black man sound like? Explain that to me. How am I so distinct, distinctly different in my speech pattern, my voice inflection, from a white man? Nobody could ever answer that question. It was very surreal to sit there and hear my name spoken. Uh, and to recognize that somebody thought that this was a story worthy of uh, being told and that it has since uh, become a political statement in this country and probably will become more so. All I did was plan on writing a book. I didn't plan on making a big political statement about race, racial relations, uh, Trump's America or anything like that. And Spike did a masterful job of uh, connecting the dots that I touched on in my book. I find him to be very honest and real. There is no pretense about him. Uh, he says what's on his mind. Uh, he doesn't care what people think. Uh, as one of the producers told me when Spike got a hold of the project, he said, it's Spike's world and we all live in it. Uh, and. Uh, I'm appreciative of him seeing a value in my story to want to uh, make it into a movie. Uh, very appreciative of that, and I'm very pleased with the end result. Jordan Peele wanted to make a movie, and from what I understand, he didn't think he had the skill set to do it, so he contacted Spike. I was told about Jordan uh, producing and directing the movie, and I was tickled to death because I had seen Get Out by that time and loved it. So I was tickled to death that Jordan was going to tackle it. And then one day I get a call from Sean Reddick, said there's been a change of plan. I said, what? He said, uh, Jordan's going to still produce, but he's not going to direct. I said, well, who's directing? And then he said, Spike Lee. And I broke out into the biggest grin because I love Spike's movies. Uh, I mean, who can be upset by Spike Lee directing a story about your life? It's an eerie feeling listening to Topher on the big screen because he has a, he had the uncanny knack of being able to sound like David Duke at certain points. I was listening to his, uh, some of his uh, speeches, some of his statements. He sounded like the David Duke that I dealt with in 1978. It was, it was very eerie hearing his voice. Uh, he captured David Duke pretty well. They even, even the makeup uh, made him look uh, very similar to the David Duke of that time period. I was very impressed by 
by Topher's performance. Very strange feeling to see somebody walking around, hi, I'm Ron Stallworth and whatnot on, on the screen. Uh, John David did a wonderful job. He's a very polite, professional, personable, I consider him a very honorable young man. His parents did a very good job raising him. And I was very, very pleased by the fact that uh, he was my on-screen alter ego. Uh, I can't say enough good things about him uh, as an individual and about his performance. I think he did a very masterful job. I hope audiences will see the fact that race relations in America uh, never stand still. It's always uh, fluid. What went on in the 70s during this time period, 1978, uh, is still going on today, probably more so now that we have a white supremacist in the White House uh, who advocates on their behalf. Uh, I hope they take away the fact that uh, you can never let your guard down in de when dealing with these people. Uh, they're very serious, they're very real. The threat is real and uh, we have to always be on our guard and never ever be afraid to confront them, to challenge them. The humor that takes place in this movie is a very well-placed humor. It, it's humor that deals with a very serious topic. It's not out of line. It's not uh, done for laughs. It's just a natural flow of the conversation dealing with the topic, the, the matter at hand. And I thought Spike was masterful in incorporating that humor at those uh, certain points. Uh, in my real life experience, it was very comedic at points. Uh, like I said, here I am, a black man pretending to be a white supremacist with the Grand Wizard, the Grand Dragon for Colorado of the Ku Klux Klan. You can't help but have comedic moments that come out of that. If I had to have one person direct something about me, it would be Spike Lee uh, because he understands the culture. He understands uh, we as a people. And he has that unique characteristic of uh, being able to bring all that uh, passion to life. Uh, so I was very pleased and am very pleased to tell people that I am a Spike Lee joint.